Hey guys and welcome back to Twitchy Plays Kerbal Space Program, my career mode playthrough that is Twitch Tech Industries. And whilst we may have found out that SSTOs are definitely not on the cards at this present moment in time, I'm thinking maybe aeroplanes are the way to go, if nothing else, so that we can get all the science together so that we can make like hypersonic engines and stuff like that, so we can actually make the SSTO. So to that end, I present you with... The maiden voyage of the brick! Isn't it spectacular, people? Isn't it spectacular? So obviously, I got a few things wrong there. So we're going to go back into the space plane hangar and just do a few tweaks. Now, I think the main problem here is those wing connectors in between just were not strong enough. So we're going to go put, put the, the standard sort of cross bracing in for these struts. This is by far my preferred method of placing struts, this sort of cross here. Because, you know, triangles are strong, it braces against itself, everything goes well. My main consideration when designing this plane was, of course, to get all three Kerbals on there. I have a pilot, an engineer, and a scientist, or if you prefer, Jeb, Bob, and Bill. I probably could have made a much more elegant design if I just had Jebediah on here, but I decided that I wanted to put a scientist on here as well, as it is a scientific gathering uh, vessel. And then once I had two of them on there, well, you know, I didn't want to leave Bob out, because Bob is just like the ultimate badass who saves everyone for any situation that they're ever in, so obviously he had to come along. Uh, that then gave me this weird sort of central fuselage that I decided to throw uh, some science on the back of. You can see I've got the um, material study on the back there. But this then gave me a super long fuselage with a weird centre of mass that I would no way be able to get fuel tanks around without adding on these sort of weird sides. I, I want to call them nacelles, but they're not really nacelles. They're sort of extra fuselages on the side. This is, this is almost like a trimaran for the air. That's uh, kind of what it's like. We obviously got the fuel tanks on the outside. That's also where the air intakes are. And then three jet engines on the back. And then I just kind of stuck these weird swept wings on the side in this sort of X formation. Just because I thought it looked cool and that was kind of like the best wings I had. It was mainly about what lift uh, I had. How much, what my lift rating was. Now the main point of this test flight was literally, as you see here, to get out, make sure I could take off and make sure I can land again. And uh, yeah, at least on a flat surface seems to work great so i'm going to take that as a as a plus and we're going to go find something you know actually profitable to do but first we need to roll ourselves into the middle of the runway here so that when we recover we get the full complement of payment for it because you know money's important or something right the realization that none of the kerbals got any experience for that was of course the most crushing thing to me as a mission commander but it's time to put together some sort of mission status so that we can, in fact, go out and legitimise the reason for this plane even existing. So we come in and have a word with Gene and we're like, hey dude, what science do you have for us? And he's like, hey, I've got this like thing to do on the planet. If you just go and fly over these places and get some stuff for me, everything will be great. I had a few tweaks to perform inside the space plane hangar, but it can basically be summed up with I had to move the back landing gear forwards a bit. And with all the administration and engineering and all this other stuff that had to happen, we didn't get out until well after dawn, but Jeb, Bill and Bob are quite happy with that. They managed to get out, go and use the uh, staff canteen, got their bacon and eggs, really got themselves set up well for a day of hygiene manoeuvres and trying to fly around and do some science. First thing to report was obviously we didn't manage to take off before the end of the runway, so obviously the landing gear are still in the wrong place. Now, I have moved those forward quite a considerable amount so I don't think moving the landing gear is going to be the way to do it what we need to do is find out some better place to put different control surfaces so we can lift the wheels rather than trying to pivot on the back one it, I know it's a different way of flying planes but hey this is what Kerbal's about experimenting with the different aerodynamic models and parts and seeing what new and interesting ways you can fly these little green frogs across the planet and now we run headlong into the real reason why I don't do very many planes in my uh, video series here Whilst planes are incredibly fun to pl fly and design and have a lot of like engineering excellence with and stuff like that, it doesn't make particularly good video when you're just flying through the clouds trying to get from checkpoint to checkpoint. It's great in person when I'm actually flying it, but yeah, I don't know about you, but this this looks very similar to, to how it looked when I started this sentence. So, um... Yeah, let's check the map and see where we're going. One thing that I did notice about the map, at least when I'm flying in this particular view, is that my predicted orbit is so massively off of what uh, the surface value shows that I'm doing. Because obviously, like, I'm, flowing, I'm flying just almost directly west. There is a little bit of a north component. But if you look at my trajectory there, my trajectory says I'm going northeast. Now, I know this is to do with the planet spin and all stuff like this. 
but it's it's very confusing when you're trying to decide which way you're going and stuff like that. You have to rely almost entirely on the nav ball. Okay, so here we go. Here's our first bit of science. Wasn't great. It was just a, a crew report. But we, we are not here to get science in that manner. Or at least we are, but we're not here to get big points of science in that manner. The big points of science are going to come from the scientific equipment that we brought along with us. Before this point, I had actually forgotten to go look inside my R&D building and figure out exactly where it was I needed to gather science from for it to be maximally efficient. But I'm fairly sure that over the top of these mountains is going to be a good place to check. And then I learned that the materials bay is not biome specific when it's in the air, which is a, a little bit annoying. Uh, there are a lot of things that weren't biome specific, in fact. But there were a lot of things that were. The mystery goo was, the temperature scans, and I think the pressure uh, readings were as well. So now I'm coming down low and I'm trying to figure out where my landing spot is. Where, where exactly it is, because obviously we had a crew report to do over a certain altitude. We now have to do a crew report and a surface sample on the floor somewhere. So I've got to try and get down below these clouds figure out exactly where my landing spot is going to be, which value it's going to be in. Uh, before that, I completely forgot about this bit, before that I decided to have a look at my uh, aerodynamic overlay and see exactly where all the lift and stuff is coming from. Whilst the wings are doing amazingly well, I'm actually surprised at how much is coming off those uh, side fuselages there, especially when I, when I really changed my pitch like that. It, it's quite good. Uh, also, the other thing that surprised me was how little control... Uh, how little lift was coming from the control surfaces. I really thought they were going to be uh, quite a bit more powerful than that, especially compared to the wings and stuff, just given how how easy it is to turn and, and change my pitch and stuff like that, as opposed to just flying forwards, which is what normally happens when your wing lift completely swamps the forces of your control surface lift. I can only ascribe it to having the super triplet combo in the cockpits here that just makes everything so much better than anything else that in the game ever, as long as you have Job, Job, Jeb, Bill and Bob. Maybe that's what they're all going to be called now, Job. Though Job sounds like we've left Bill out and, you know, Bill is quite important. He is the scientist, so maybe Jebilob? Maybe, maybe something like that. I don't know. So we have now flown over the top of uh, both our scientific targets here. And I'm about to perform a manoeuvre that those of you that follow my Kerbal Warfare will be very familiar with. I call it the making a turn while you don't have anywhere near enough speed so that all your wing lift gives out and you pancake into the floor too hard. I, oh, it's just it's a perfect move. So we're going to go back to the launch, you know, as you do. Well, I did originally go back to the launch, and then I was like, wait, I, they didn't really take off very well. There wasn't really much airlift going on. Maybe we can do a few things to tweak this. And the things that I do to tweak this is put these little winglets on the front edge here. So I'm going to try and pull up my nose rather than pushing down my tail, which, which seems like the way forwards here. Of course, my next consideration is how this throws the balance of the wings out. And I'm not talking about the aerodynamic balance. I'm talking the aesthetic balance. So I had to bring that front wing forwards a little bit to make sure that it's leading edge matched up with the leading edge of those front um, winglets there. Uh, I then realised that my centre of lift was so far removed from my centre of mass that I was going to have some very, very big trouble. So I started slapping on some extra wings around the outside. Putting those two on there seemed alright, but I could definitely have done with a few more. Uh, I did experiment with, put, with the idea of putting some control surfaces on there, but it was so awkward. Everything was so at the wrong angle and stuff that I decided that that was not the way to go. Also, upon finding out that the uh, experiments wouldn't really uh, reset well, I decided to put some extra ones on. So we're going to go with this and see how this flies here. Obviously, we have reverted to the point where Jebediah, Bill and Bob have just come out of the canteen, so everything is working absolutely fine for them. We come along, we start building up some speed here, we get to about 60 kilometers, and boom, straight into a vertical climb. Unfortunately, I now cannot get out of this vertical climb. I'm, I'm trying everything. So I try a bit of a side spin, and that doesn't work too well. So we pull up again, and pancake our way right into the VAB. And not just a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no. This is my first legitimate smashing up of my VAB. Um, unfortunately, we just revert. I, I was very tempted to keep it and be like, well, this is what happened. Um, on that note, like, so the way I've been justifying all this to myself is they were all just simulations, right? You know, this is a new plane that we're working on. It, it needs to be simulated. But I'd actually like to pre-call that simulation so that I can actually call a, a distinction between when, I, when I'm simulating and when I'm doing the real effort. Because as it stands at the moment, every time the real effort goes wrong, I just claim it was a simulation. 
I, I don't know. I don't know if that's good or not. But anyway, all that chatter completely glossed over the fact of what I'm doing here. I am putting a mirror of these underwings on the overside. My thought is that maybe my um, center of lift was far too below my center of gravity. So I ended up like tipping my ship up and that's why I couldn't get out. So we're going to see if that works. Uh, here we are once again on the runway shortly after the canteen visit by the three big boys here. Ripping our way down this runway, we get to about 70, maybe 80 meters per second, possibly pushing 90. I'm, I wasn't particularly uh, sure there. But we managed to pull up and over ourselves, get round into the full 180. And yes, those extra wings up on top definitely did the trick. Balanced out my uh, center of lift perfectly without my center of mass. And here we go flying. And as this section of the flight is absolutely no different from the first time you watched me fly from this point to the uh, scientific point of interest over there, I think what we're going to do is make a cut over towards the point where I make my quick save as we are, I don't know, less than a kilometre away from our first scientific point of interest here. Flying on strong, you can see on my nav ball here that we are very, very close indeed. The actual target for the science point is starting to creep its way up my nav ball, which means that I'm coming up to the point where I'm flying underneath it. And thankfully that is the scientific, um, sorry, that is the contract parameter that I'm trying to meet. I need to fly underneath a certain altitude underneath this marker to take the crew report and make sure everything is fine, which we are doing right now. Okay, so I think I make another bit of a quick save here, but the first thing I'm going to do is go through and get all the extraneous science, the materials bay, the goo, the pressureometer, or as we call them barometers, and the temperature scan, or as most people call them, thermometers okay so I can now look over there and see kind of where I'm trying to go I know it is to the right of that big mountain range there I think one of those is k1 I, I can't quite remember what the uh, what the community's been naming the mountains but it is those big mountains at the back of the space center which I think is absolutely hilarious. Those mountains can actually be reached if you just strap a command pod on top of an SRB and hit go. By the time you have gone up and come back down, the spin of the planet will rotate those mountains underneath you. Ah, and I have had to build this horrible contraption of death and horrors and nastiness to bring these guys over here. What is going on with my game? Anyway, geographical rant over. It's time for Jebediah to take his life into his hands and dive down underneath the clouds trying to spot how lower down it is we actually need to go and I'm kind of looking around now trying to figure out where the ideal landing spot is I think I need to land somewhere around those like four little hillocks almost right in front of us there but it's trying to come down in a reasonable manner um, to, to, to find a nice flat landing spot. If we come down in any way other than flat relative to the ground, when we try and apply our brakes, we're going to spin out and have all sorts of horrible trouble here. But as it happens, we just happen to put down very, very gently. We hit the brakes and do a forward flip. Not quite the intended plan, and I do find that very interesting, but more interesting so is how much I zoomed out. Like, how much tunnel vision do I have when I play this game? Like, if, if I've got to zoom out and get that, that whole massive explosion into such a tiny, almost like a dime-sized hole. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so, we could go through and rewatch this entire process again. I mean, all I did was uh, reload the quick save. But I don't think we're going to do that because literally all I did was reload the quick save. So, nothing interesting is going to happen between, like, now and the landing point. <laughs> Well, I say I did things exactly the same. What I actually did this time was come more parallel towards the mountains and took a sharp uh, right-hand turn, a sharp westwards turn. So I'm coming in sort of at a right angle to the direction that I landed last time, just to see if the other direction is better. So we're coming down very, very slowly, coming down at about 70 meters per second, or at least that is my surface velocity. That is a mix of both... Uh, vertical and horizontal speed. Uh, my vertical speed is about 10 meters per second, so we can presume that I'm going about 50. I did have a beautiful touchdown point there, but then I ran over the side of a cliff and we had to find this new um, plateau to land on, which sounds great. Like, we, we've got a good bit, but this now means that I have to get up that cliff face to get back to the point where my science had to be done. Now, this, this is alright. Jebediah is a well-experienced pilot, not just experienced in all sorts of air travel, but also in how to traverse the many and very different landscapes you find on Kerbin, the Moon and Minmus. I wish I could say he's done more, but he has not done more in this save, though other incarnations of him have been to every planet in this game. 
and thus travelling uphill in a jet engine designed for flying through the air but this time being used on the floor is no trouble for Jebediah whatsoever. So we have now entered our next scientific target point and it's time to get Bob out, sorry, Bill out. I always get those two mixed up. It's time to get Bill out and go do some serious sciencing here. I, I am thinking about how we can move them down and the first thing I try and do is lower my front landing gear so they can jump off the front nose but then I find out that I've got two landing gear there and no matter what I do uh, I wasn't going to be able to get them both up because I could only click on one of them to pull it up and it was always the same one which is annoying. So I managed to do this sort of weird sort of sit on my back legs thing here. I don't know how I managed that. It I was just like overjoyed that when I put my gears away and put them back up this happened so Bob sorry Bill could climb up and down the back again with the surface sampling achieved Bill is going to climb on up uh, the back of the vessel here I literally just had to hammer the F key uh, as he would pull himself up grab the next thing and put up if I left at any moment at all he would slip his way back down but I, I quite like this new clamber capability it, it's really good so now we're trying to find a way back down that cliff I didn't quite realize that the second second point would be down there else I would have done that before I came up the cliff but you know that that's the way things work in this game if you if you don't plan ahead you end up suffering from the lack of planning ahead. But now Jebediah is trying to look for a nice smooth way down. Uh, obviously the way to find that is to go uphill because you know getting to the top of the hill will find you the, the, the shallower bit, right? Right? Help me out here guys. Anyway, the correct choice or not, we decide that we are going down this hill just over here. That is mainly because it is the one in front of me. Uh, and we start going pretty well, and I'm like, okay, maybe we should start slowing down a little bit. We enter into the uh, the science zone, and I'm like, right, brakes. Just, just, just favor those brakes. Ah, oh, I've lost my wing. We come so far, and on this final, final hurdle, we manage to break a wing. and mean that we're not being able to, like, go back and get our full recover value for being landed on the runway i mean that that would be the ultimate end to this mission being able to go back with the same vessel and and, and recover and get everything and it'll just be like a nice closed loop and i'd be all happy here but that's not how it happened right so we're going to try and find a way of getting up with bill here and i find a few things that we can actually hook onto, but it's not good enough we're going to have to uh, drop some landing gear nearly managed to drop it on top of bill there and that would have been funny i don't think we can kill him by dropping a uh, an airplane on him like that at least not from this sort of distance i reckon we could from you know from orbit or something like that but from just off uh, off the landing gear, we've not managed to kill him. So we're going to go around and use up all our scientific instruments just to make sure that we get the maximum scientific bang for our buck here. And with the last crew report being done by Bill, it is time to recover. Back at the Kerbal Space Center, you can see everyone earned themselves some ribbons from this. But more importantly, we earned ourselves 71 science which is a little bit under what I was hoping for, but it does give us enough science to be able to get one of the lower tiers of science that we need to get hold of, though I think I'm actually going to save it. One of the other things we do here is start trading reputation for science, because this is this, the thing that's holding me back, is the amount of science. I've got as much reputation as I need, and I think I've got as much money as I need, so I'm going to literally be trading both of those for science. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this plane field adventure guys i will see you next time where we're going to continue well trying to do all sorts of horrible things maybe even replace that space uh, station that we had up up top that blew up for some unknown kraken reason but anyway i will see you then when we're gonna do that bye crackly voice